Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at the serverside.com and I wanted to talk to you about just installing Git. It's uh, pretty easy when you're doing it on Windows. So the first thing you want to do is just, I guess you could Google download Git. It'll take you right to the Git downloads. Now, always make sure when you do this you've actually typed in the right URL because sometimes people can fish you if you've typed it in incorrectly. But you can see here I've got the downloads. The nice thing about Git is that there are no prerequisites. So as long as you've got an operating system, you can install Git on it. You don't have to install Java. You don't have to install Maven. You don't have to install any crazy tool like that. So I've actually got an old 32-bit version of Windows here. Uh, hopefully you can afford the 64-bit version of Windows. But as you can see, just click on that link, and pretty quickly it will download 44 megs in size. Uh, not too big considering how awesome the tool itself is. And there we go, looks like it's downloaded. I'll show that in the folder that it's downloaded to. Nice little executable program there. And I'm just going to double click it and do the install. Click run, take a look at the preamble, figure out where to install it. I'm just going to install it in tools slash git, all lowercase letter, I like doing that. Click next. It'll create that directory for me because it's not already installed. Yes, go ahead. And then you can see the basic options here. Um, I'm going to install the git bash and the git GUI, two nice tools for working with git. I'll just call it git put it in the start menu. Now notice here you've got the option to use the Vim editor by default for your merges. A lot of people don't like that. I actually really recommend uh, installing Notepad++ and using that as your default Git editor. I think it's a lot easier, especially if you're a Windows user. Uh, I don't have Notepad installed, so I got a default to Vim. Uh, you can always set that up in the configuration files later. There's a couple of different configuration files you can use. Use git from bash only? No, that doesn't make sense. I'm going to use it from the command line, third-party software, wherever I want to use it. Use the OpenSSL library, may as well. Um, check out Windows style commit Unix style line endings. Um, and this just, uh, when you're working from Windows to Linux, you know, sometimes people can have peculiar end-of-line characters. This will just make sure that if you're working in Windows but you're pushing into Git, that uh, we won't have problems with the way that the end-of-line characters are, are managed. You can do just check out as is, commit as is, and it'll just throw things in depending on the way they are in your environment. Uh, I like this option here. It's the safest. Uh, use Minty, the default terminal. Me as well. Enable file system caching. We will do that. And then you click install, and the tool just goes through the basic installation process. It's fairly quick, fairly fast. It's only about, what, 45 megabytes in size, so it's not a, a huge installation. Now, as this gets installed, you'll notice that if you dig into your system settings, and let me see if I can find, edit the system variables is where I'm going to go. I'm going to click finish right here, take a look at my environment variables, and then dig down into the path there. And you notice that git command folder has been added to the path. So because that's been added to the path, I can now actually run git from just about any folder that I want. So git's now installed. I can verify that. I can take a look. There is the git installation there. Um, and what do you do after you've installed git? Well, maybe you just want to actually do some coding. So uh, I'm going to go up into my documents folder. Well, actually, I'm going to do it right from my C drive. Create a new folder. I'll call it repos. Inside here I'll run the bash command. You notice that it's installed bash for me. And I'll say git init, which is always the, the first thing that you do. And do a little ls command there. Okay, nothing seems crazy in there, but you do see if I go into that repos folder, there's a hidden folder called .git. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new file in here. So I'll say create a new text document, call it hello world.txt. 
do a little ls here so you can see that hello world text is there. I'm going to do git status. It's going to say there's no commits and you've got an untracked file. I'm going to track that file by saying git add dot. Do a git status again. You can see hey it's tracked and now it's a new file. I'm going to commit it. Git commit dash m. And it says hey you haven't set up your user or your email address. So I'm going to have to do that. Git config dash dash global user dot email. Git config global user dot name. And now I'll try that git commit again. And there we go. Everything goes in. I can even do a git ref log. And there we can see we've got a nice little history, one commit, that's the initial first commit. And so there you go, I have installed git, I have downloaded it, I've even gone in and run a few of the basic git commands that everybody should know. Anyways, if uh, you're interested, follow me over on Twitter, I'm CameronMCNZ over there, um, and always check in with the serverside.com for more information on Java, software development, microservices, DevOps, and all of the coolest tools like Git.